عملي مع الخوط البيضاء لم يكن مجرد When war broke out in Syria, Khalil was working in his family business in the south of the country. Khalil's 30, with a wife and young children. We've changed his name to protect his identity. He was faced with an awful choice. I was called up to join the army, and I faced two options. Either to take part in armed actions with the rebels, or to serve in the Syrian army. Both options meant that I would either be a killer or a dead man. Khalil didn't want to fight and wouldn't, so he and some other local men formed a team to help rescue civilians after bombings. There was a lack of tactics and professional crew to transport the injured. A man, who we used to meet while responding to bombings, proposed we organize a team to help civilians. This team were then approached to become White Helmets, part of a coordinated group of volunteer rescuers across Syria, They're backed by the UK government, having so far had more than 38 million pounds of UK funding. We went through sport and rope climbing tests. They examined our fitness. Khalil went for training outside Syria, training from a foundation founded by a former British army officer. Some people were experienced because they were qualified nurses and knew about first aid. Others were defectors from the fire brigade. Those who passed the test were then registered. He was trained in search and rescue, in fire extinguishing, in life-saving, in how to drive an ambulance, all in around four weeks. Often, when we were transporting an injured woman, man or child, they would start praying, kissing us, and thanking us. It was such a beautiful feeling. For the people who were trapped in this conflict, the White Helmets was their safety net. Khalil was a white helmet in Syria for three and a half years. Although they say they would treat anyone, they operate in rebel areas, and the Syrian regime and its allies have falsely linked them to Al-Qaeda. They became targets for the Syrian regime, and eventually Khalil and his family had to be evacuated from Syria, along with 400 other white helmets and their family members. How hard has it been leaving that behind? It was so hard for me. It was almost as if you'd taken out a part of my body. They were taken to Jordan and then to the UK to live. Do you remember when you first arrived? Uh, I was shocked that after being threatened by death or arrest, I was now in a safe country. Here, there is freedom, democracy, peace. A multitude of all different religions side by side and many other things that I'd been living without. So I was happy that I'd arrived in the United Kingdom. The White Helmets went through a thorough vetting process and were given refugee status before arrival as part of the UK government's Vulnerable Persons Resettlement Scheme. For the first time, the government has confirmed that it's resettled around 100 refugees who were Syrian White Helmets and their family members. What do you hope for the White Helmets who have found a new life here? And I would hope that they will play a full part in their communities here, that they will find safety, that they will learn English, that they will move into employment, and they will find security, safety and stability, not only for themselves, but for their families. Many of them brought children with them, and I think it's about providing them with safety and the safe haven that the UK can be. A few months in, Khalil and his family are getting used to life in the UK. Certainly it's hard. I left to a country with different traditions, lifestyle and language. But at the same time, I left a place where I was threatened by death or arrest to come to a place where you feel your value as a human being and have rights. What is the strangest thing about life here? <laughs> I do not call them strange. Rather, it's just a different lifestyle. The time here is of utmost importance. It is quite precise. Time commitment is very, very important. They don't waste time here without making use of it. Initially, I found it strange, but now I'm used to it. 
life has completely changed. Now I have goals. Firstly, to take care of my children and their future. And I'm working hard on learning the language here. I also want to return the favour to the United Kingdom and its people who supported us while I was still in Syria.